Yo, what's up developers? My name is Tolopots and in today's video we are going to be looking into vanilla JavaScript page transitions. Now, as you can see here, there's multiple pages and let's say from home I click on about. You can see a black barrier or black transition page or diff element slides up and then when we get to the about page it slides out with the page loaded. Let's say if we go to surfaces you can see it slides over and then fades out with the new surfaces page and if we go back to home you can see these transitions move together in different ways. So that is awesome and that's what we're going to be learning today so if you're excited to learn some transition basics don't forget to leave a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button and let's carry on with the rest of the video. Okay guys, as you can see here, I have this basic template and when I swap pages, it just does a generic everything swaps normally. Um, now we're going to go into the code. As you can see here, we have a bunch of different files. Let's just close them all for now and let me run through you what's here. Now you can download this repository. It's on GitHub. The link will be in the description below. But if you don't want to run it and you want to do this on your own page and you only have to follow the transition steps. So let's go into index and you can see the base fit. So we've got the head. Um, we're including two CSS style sheets, main, which is one we're not going to look at, and transitions. Now, this is the style sheet we're actually going to be using. We then have a page class, and we have a JavaScript. Now, JavaScript and all this, that from the body upwards, well, to be fair, from the header navbar upwards, and the pretty much the whole thing is the same. The only thing that's different is the titles and the page inners. So... Obviously, when you're building this, you're normally using the template engine, so all this is in a file, and you can you don't have to keep editing it manually, but you get the gist. So this is what we've got in our main CSS. There's a bunch of uh, CSS in there, not loads, but just a bit. And then in our main JavaScript, there's nothing because we're going to be writing that. And in our transitions, there's nothing because we're going to be writing that too. So let's crack on. So the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to add a transit. Oh, cancel. I didn't want to do that. Uh, we're going to need to add a transition element to the page. So something we're going to use to create the transition, such as a block element that will cover the screen and then uncover the screen when it's done. So let's say transition um, and then dot is active. So when we call these transitions, obviously when we first load a page, we want the transition to be active because we want it to be able to slide out. So there's three stages to the um, a page transition. Stage one is the hide. So when you first load a page uh, or transition away from the page, you want to hide the page with the transition. So the transition will become active. You then want to... Um, then obviously once the page loads you want to hide the transition so then the transition becomes inactive and then during the whole transition phase there's obviously the static element that is just there and that stage is basically the in-between and that's the transference so there's three different stages we're going to be focused on the first stage and the last stage in this tutorial so let's have a look at the first transition so we've got an element called transition and is active that's great. Um, that doesn't do anything yet. And we don't actually need it to do anything just yet. First things first, we need to actually make our links not cool until we've created our transition. So each transition we create is going to have a transition ID for now. And we're going to call this transition one. Um, on the index page, you will also need to copy this onto the about page and onto the main services page. So all your pages, obviously, if you've got a templating engine, you'd probably only have to do this once. Unfortunately, I'm not using a template engine. I'm just using vanilla uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So as you can see here, we've got this and all of them have transition one. So we need to go into our transitions.css and start styling this. So the first one we're going to do is obviously transition one. And we're going to set it to position fixed. So we're going to get it to cover the whole screen by just doing left, zero, right, zero, bottom, zero. We're going to have a C index of 101 because I have something at 100 and we want this to be on top of everything. We're going to have a background color of dash dash dark or sorry, far 
dash dash duck now there's a variable i have set up inside my main css in the roots um you can also do the same if you want or just use the of the normal way of doing colors by just writing out a color variable um we're then going to set the opacity to zero so transition one will not be active obviously by default unless it has um enough a class on it point of offense none so when this is hidden we don't want any point of offense to be on this because it will block the interactivity with the page and then finally, we need a transition. Now, we need to know how long this is going to be. And we're going to do it for half a second each transition. Eats out. The reason we need to know is because in JavaScript, we need to set a timer delay so we can actually guess and work with these transitions. So we've got transition one. We now need transition one dot is active. So this is the state when it's active. So what happens when it appears on screen? Now, for the first one, we're only going to be changing the opacity. So all we need to say is opacity one pointer offense oh and as you can see here that is all we need for transition one so if we go back to let's say home and we refresh you can see we have a black screen now the issue here is nothing's happening like we can't click everything's been blocked our screen is dark we can't actually do anything and that's where javascript comes in so if we go into javascript now and we write we have to write a few things so when we when the window loads, so once everything is loaded on the page, including images and everything else, we are going to call this function on load. And this actually is an arrow function, so we're using some ES6 syntax. But the first thing we need to do is basically set timeout, or set not set interval, set timeout, and the timeout will be 500 second so remember in our transition says we set this to be half a second this is 500 milliseconds so we're saying 500 milliseconds and in our set timeout we just need to say transition elements we need to get the element so up in our on load we're going to say const transition element is equal to document dot query selector and we're just going to get our transition element now, obviously, if you are, you probably want to use an ID or something more normal because there's going to be probably transition classes elsewhere. But for now, we only have one, so we don't need anything else. And then we're just going to say transition element element dot class list dot remove is active. So now, if we save and we go back and we refresh, you can see it fades away. So when we've loaded the page, it fades away. So if we click on about, that fades away. When we click on about. Sorry, my caching obviously had an effect there. I had to clear the cache. So we go to about, services, thingy. But that's not a very cool transition. We only transition on page load. We actually need to do a transition now when we click on a link. But if you click on a link by default, right, and when you click through it, you're going to snap straight to the other page. You're not going to have any delay or anything. So we need to prevent the normal link behavior. Now you can do this by either adding special classes to the links you want or you can do it by adding um, or you could do it by all links on the page. So we're going to do it by all links on the page and we'll call this anchors. all A. Now once you've got your anchors you're going to say anchor or you're going to say for let i is equal to zero, i is less than anchors.length then once we've got our thing we're going to do i plus plus so what's happening here is we're saying uh, this is just a standard for loop where we loop through every iteration of anchor so every anchor tag or link we find on the page we're going to loop through it now we're going to just quickly create a constant called anchor and we're going to set this equal to anchors i you then are going to say anchor dot add event listener clicks so every time you click on a link we're going to say E, we'll just use an arrow function here and we're going to say e dot prevent default so what happens here is when you prevent a default it means it's not actually going to link you to a different page it's just going to do nothing so when you click it it's not going to take you to another page where i think you're just preventing that so we need to actually go to a different page now so we're going to say let target is equal to e dot target dot href now that's going to get the um, the link where it's supposed to go to and store it in target. So we're just going to log our target for now just so we can see this working. So let's store that and go back to here, refresh. 
Uh, I'm just going to turn preserve. Nope. Can clear that. Just hide that. I don't know what that was like. Okay, so we've got this. So now if we click about, you can see it says we were trying to go to the about page. We click services, trying to go to the services page. We click contact, it was trying to go to nothing because I haven't actually set it up because we're not going to need it. Um, and then home page is also that because we're on the current home page. So that's fine. So it actually it lists out what where we want to go. But why you're probably wondering why do we need to do this? And the reason is because we can't, if we add an animation when we click this next link, and we don't delay the link transference, then nothing's going to happen. The page is just going to be, um, how do you pull it? The page will just, you'll animate across, or you won't even see the animation because the page could change that quickly, um, depending on the speed of your internet and the server. So what we need to do is say transition element dot class list dot add is active. So this is going to add the overlay on top of our page. Uh, before we go so now if we do this and we refresh and now we click about you can see we activate this but again we prevented the default so now we ain't going to our next page so we need to set a timeout and we've got to set this for the same amount of time um, the animation lasts for so let's say in transition we've set to 0.5 seconds so we need to set that for five seconds now inside of here we're going to say window dot location dot href is equal to target so the target we stored is now being used here so as soon as these 500 seconds open or 500 seconds i keep saying 500 seconds it's 500 milliseconds so half a second as soon as that's done that means our transition would have finished and we'll be stuck for black screen and then we're going to start reloading the next screen which will allow us so if we refresh here you can see we've got about and we go to about to fade in and fade out there you go so you've already got the base of your website started. So you go to about, there you go. And that is all looking good. So let's just zoom in here. I might have been a bit too zoomed out. There you go. So you can see here everything what's going on. And over here, let's zoom in a little here as well, just so you can see it a bit clearer. So when we go to about, you can see we fade out and we fade back in. Same with both sides we go to. So now we've got the fading animation happening. That's awesome, but that's not a cool animation. That's just a basic animation. Let's go a little bit more advanced. And let's set up a transition to. So let's just copy this and say transition to, transition to. Now we need to go to, well, we need to basically, for this one, we need to change the opacity. We don't actually want the opacity in there. And because we're going to be sliding this element off screen, we don't actually need the pointer offense. So we've just got this. We're then going to say, let's say we're going to slide in from the left. So we would just want to say left is equal to minus 100%. Uh, we won't have right, but we will have width 100%. The reason being is because if you got stuck to a right, even if you go negative um, 100%, it will still be on your screen. Um, so now we've got this. Now if we go to the second one, we can say left, zero pixels. And now if we go back, into our let's say HTML and we say that or we'll go to index and we'll say this one is now equal to transition two. So we've got our fade animation. Let's just refresh the screen. You can see it slides out now when the page first loads. So if we go to about it slides in and then it fades out. And if we go back to home it fades up and it slides out. If we go to about page and change it to transition two as well, you'll see if we go to about it slides over and it up uh, the cache is getting us again. Let's refresh the cache. So there you go. You can see it now slides over and then slides out, slides over and then slides out. So that's a second one. But we could do one better. Let's go to transitions. And let's create one last transition. We're going to call this transition free. Um, obviously, for obvious reasons there. And this one is going to be top zero. Left zero. Oh. Uh, we could either leave uh, that or we could do zero and then we're going to remove bottom We're just going to say height 100% and we're going to say top 100% Save and now we're going to add transition free to surfaces. So let's surfaces there Transition free for that and we'll keep HTML as transition to so let's refresh We're gonna have to refresh our surfaces page as well. There you go. So now let's go to home so you can see home, we slide in from the side. If we go to about, it slides over, 
and then that slides down. If we go to surfaces, it slides up and then slides back down. And as you can see, the page is transitioning with these really cool transition effects. Now you can add a lot more to this. You can add elements. So when you transition, if you're, let's say your page has big images and loads of imagery on it, you know it's going to take a while to load. So you don't want to be stuck with just a black screen. So on that black screen, you could add a loader or anything you want, which will just keep spinning until the next page loads. And then you'll have this really nice um, transition effect. But we're not going to do that in this video. We're going to do that in the next video on more advanced topics for the page transitions. But this has been a really great start to page transitions. And I really hope you enjoyed it because I really have enjoyed it. Uh, page jar Vanilla JavaScript is my... Uh, favorite thing to do i won't i won't lie um and if you like it too don't forget to leave a thumbs up smash that subscribe button ring that notification bell to know as soon as enough video goes live but for now guys this is the end of this video you're all awesome thank you very much and i will see you in the next video so peace out